Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 55. In this video, we will discuss the definition and terminology of several different types of Sudoku links. A Sudoku link is a logical relationship between two elements within a Sudoku puzzle. Elements include possible candidates between two different cells or possible candidates within the same cell. Links are building blocks used in advanced puzzle solving techniques. A group of links are used together to come to a conclusion some candidates need to be removed or a cell has a certain value. Links are most commonly used in chaining and looping techniques. Here is a list of all the chaining and looping techniques DX Sudoku will cover in a tutorial video. Tutorial videos already exist for the remote pair, X-Chain, Turbotfish, Two-String Kite, Skyscraper, and Empty Rectangle techniques. For some reason, I have gotten into a habit of saying turbo fish instead of turbot fish. Please accept my apology for saying it incorrectly at times. The XY chain will be the next video to do in this set once I complete all the uniqueness videos. The next uniqueness video to do is hidden rectangle in which I will use links in the explanation and reference this video. There are four types of links to be covered in this video. We will go through each one in great detail. Remember, a link is a logical relationship between two elements within a Sudoku puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku. All the cells having a possible 9 candidate are highlighted in green. First, we're going to talk about weak links. A weak link is a logical relationship where if the first thing is true, the second thing must be false. Let's examine what this means by example. Consider the possible 9 candidate in cell 2, 3 as a starting point now outlined. We are now showing a weak link relationship with the possible 9 candidate in cell 2, 3 with the possible 9 candidate in cell 4, 3 now outlined. A dotted line is used to indicate we are showing a weak link relationship. The arrow indicates the direction of the relationship. So what this means is, if it is true there is a value of 9 in cell 2, 3, then it is false there is a value of 9 in cell 4, 3 as indicated by a red X. In other words, if there is a 9 in cell 2, 3, there can't be a 9 in cell 4, 3. Some people seem to get confused by the true then false verbiage used in defining links. Just remember, what this indicates is a relationship between two elements of the puzzle. Now let's consider the both can be false part of the weak link definition. Assume cell 7, 3 has a value of 9. This means there cannot be a 9 in cell 2, 3, and there cannot be a 9 in cell 4, 3, as indicated by red X's. As you can see, this is the case where both candidates in the relationship diagram are false. Next, we are going to consider how weak links can occur between two candidates within the same cell. We are expanding cell 2, 3 as shown. There is a weak link relationship between the 9 and 5 candidates as indicated by the dotted line. The arrow indicates the direction of the relationship. If the 9 is true, now circled, then the 5 must be false as shown by the red X. So with the current state of the puzzle, the possible 9 candidate in cell 2, 3 is participating in 6 weak link relationships. 5 are with candidates and cells being in the same shared house, and 1 is between the 9 and the 5 within cell 2, 3. Next, we're going to discuss strong links. Again, we're going to use the possible 9 candidate in cell 2, 3 as a starting point, now outlined. We are now showing a strong link relationship with the possible 9 candidate in cell 2, 3 with the possible 9 candidate in cell 2, 8 now outlined. A solid line is used to indicate we are showing a strong link relationship. The arrow indicates the direction of the relationship. So what this means is, if it is false, that is, there is not a value of 9 in cell 2, 3, then it is true there must be a value of 9 in cell 2, 8 as shown. In other words, if cell 2, 3 does not have a value of 9, then cell 2, 8 must have a value of 9. This is because there must be at least one value of 9 in the house making up row 2. 
Now, unlike weak links, where both candidates in the relationship can both be false, it seems to me it is not possible for both candidates to both be true in a strong link relationship. This is because the most basic Sudoku rule is there must be only one value of each number in each of the 27 houses, making up a Sudoku puzzle. But from the Hudoku wiki page on strong links, it states, both true is only possible in very advanced types of links. Although I have never seen a strong link where both candidates are true, I have the greatest level of respect for Bernard Habiger, who created Hudoku. And just as with weak links, candidates within cells can have strong link relationships. We have expanded cell 2,3, showing a strong link relationship between the 9 and the 5. If the cell is not 9, then it must have a value of 5. However, unlike weak links, strong links within cells can only occur in a bivalue cell or a cell having exactly two possible candidates. Also, unlike weak links, at most I've ever seen is three strong links for a candidate within a cell. Here in this example, the possible nine candidate in cell 2,3 has two strong links, one with the possible nine candidate in cell 2,8, and one with the five candidate within the cell. Consider this example with a skyscraper now highlighted. The possible 7 candidate in cell 2,5 has a strong link relationship with the 7 in cell 2,7 as shown. The possible 7 candidate in cell 2,5 also has a strong link relationship with the 7 in cell 8,5 as shown. And the possible 7 candidate in cell 2,5 has a strong link relationship with the possible 4 candidate within the cell as shown. So the possible 7 candidate in cell 2,5 is currently participating in three different strong link relationships. Being able to see all the strong link relationships for a candidate within a cell becomes important when building up a chaining sequence and more advanced Sudoku puzzle solving techniques. Next we return to our original example and we are going to discuss either or links. Again, we will start with the possible 9 candidate in cell 2,3 now outlined. As stated previously, there is a strong link relationship between the 9 in cell 2,3 and the 9 in cell 2,8 as shown. There is also a strong link relationship between the 9 in cell 2,8 and the 9 in cell 2,3 as shown. When we have a strong link in both directions, we call this a bidirectional link. A bidirectional strong link is indicated by a single line having arrowheads at both ends as shown. In this example, there is also a bidirectional weak link relationship with the nines in each of the cells as shown. When we have a both a bidirectional strong and weak link between two candidates, we call this an either or link. An either or link is indicated by having a solid line between the two cells with no arrowhead as shown. What this means is there's a 9 in cell 2,3 or there's a 9 in cell 2,8. There's at least one 9 in one or the other. As you can see in this example, we have two sets of either or links lining up in the same columns forming an X wing. Next, consider the following Sudoku in progress. We are now going to talk about group links by showing an example of a group discontinuous nice loop puzzle solving technique. In the future, the plan is to have a tutorial video on group discontinuous nice loops with more details and how to find them in the puzzle. For now, just accept we are going to use the possible 2 candidate in cell 1,6 as our starting point in our chaining sequence. We are highlighting the possible 2 candidate in cell 1,6 in green and outlined to indicate this is the chosen value for the cell. We are now going to build our chaining sequence on the starting assumption cell 1,6 has a value of 2. The next part of the sequence we are now showing a weak link relationship with the two possible 2 candidates in cell 1,8 and cell 1,9. We are treating cell 1,8 and 1,9 as a single group node. So we are currently showing a group weak link relationship from the 2 in cell 1,2 to the group of 2's now outlined as a node. 
Next, we are showing a grouped strong link relationship from our two twos to the possible two candidate in cell 3, 7 as shown. The twos are highlighted in purple to indicate they are false or canceled out in the chaining sequence. So let's review our chaining sequence so far. We have a value of 2 in cell 1, 6. This cancels out the twos in cell 1, 8 and in cell 1, 9 as indicated by being highlighted in purple. Since there must be at least one 2 in the house making up block 3, we are now showing a value of 2 in cell 3, 7, as indicated by the candidate highlighted in dark green. Group links have been demonstrated at this point, but for completeness we will continue showing the chaining sequence for this example. Here is the next chain in the sequence. We have a weak link relationship between the 2 in cell 3, 7 and the 2 in cell 3, 2 as shown. Next, we have a strong link relationship between the 2 in cell 3, 2 and the 5 within the same cell. Next, we have a weak link relationship between the 5 in cell 3, 2 and the 5 in cell 3, 5 as shown. Then we have our final relationship in the chaining sequence, returning back to our starting point. We have a strong link relationship between the 5 in cell 5, 5 and the 5 in cell 1, 6 as shown. We have a contradiction with our original premise. When we start out with a 2 in cell 1, 6, the chaining sequence results in us having to set 5 in cell 1, 6. Since both values cannot be set in the same cell, we must conclude our original premise is false or cannot occur. Therefore, we can remove the possible 2 candidate from cell 1, 6. You can also think of it this way. Since there has to be at least one value of 5 in the house making up block 2, we cannot choose the value 2 for the cell 1, 6. Removing a possible 2 candidate from cell 1, 6 may not seem like much for all this effort. But in puzzles that have these types of loops, it usually requires removing several layers of these loops before a naked single or, or hidden single pops up in solving the rest of the puzzle. We remove the non-possible 2 candidate in the cell 1, 6 as shown. This is a pretty challenging puzzle if you are interested. It will eventually require using a finned Franken swordfish puzzle solving technique in order to solve it. Although there are more complicated ways of solving this same puzzle, the finned Franken swordfish is the easiest. This completes DX Sudoku training video number 55. Please support DX Sudoku. Thank you for watching.